Welcome, Coach Art community. Thank you so much for joining me for a guided painting lesson. My name is Eric, and I'm a program director with Coach Art. And for the folks that don't know who Coach Art is, we're a nonprofit organization that provides free arts and athletics lessons to students impacted by chronic illness. And we have big news. We are nationwide now. So as of this month, uh, we are accepting students in all 50 states, as well as volunteers. So if you're a student uh, or if you know of anyone that's been impacted by chronic illness between the ages of 5 and 18, uh, send them off to our website. We'd love to have them uh, be part of the organization and their siblings as well. Uh, and if you are a volunteer 18 and older uh, who has a skill and is uh, interested in, in sharing it with one of our students, I also encourage you to go to our website and we can get you started. Uh, awesome. So as far as today's artwork, we're going to be painting this piece inspired by Yellowstone National Park. And it's also featuring one of uh, Earth's uh, majestic beasts, the American bison. I had the opportunity to uh, go to Yellowstone a couple of times uh, while working as a camp counselor with the nonprofit Crossroads. Shout out to Crossroads. Uh, we would take a, a groups of uh, teenagers uh, for eight day treks in the uh, mountains of Wyoming. We would always stop by uh, Yellowstone National Park uh, and super, super cool there. You can see uh, the bison roaming around freely uh, and, and they would get close to your car and never honk at them though. Uh, they can get easily startled, startled and might hurt uh, others or themselves. Uh, but awesome, as we're painting, we'll definitely be learning a little bit more about bison. Uh, but if you're not familiar with how these lessons go, we are gonna be uh, taking it step by step. I'll be uh, showing you what colors to mix, what brushes to take, and by the end of the lesson, you would have painted your own rendition of today's uh, artwork. As far as lesson materials, I'm gonna be using an 11 by 14 canvas panel, uh, but you're welcome to use whatever you have at hand. Uh, I'll also be using uh, two main brushes uh, that include a flat brush that looks a bit like this and a round brush that looks a bit like this. And we're also going to be needing some cleaning supplies, so some paper towels. Uh, you're definitely going to need some water so you can clean off uh, your, bro uh, your brushes as you move along. Um, and then I'm going to be using two plates, uh, paper plates. One is going to be uh, our palette. This is what we'll, we'll be mixing our colors. And then the second one is going to be used as a fan. So we can speed up some of these uh, sections and they can dry up a little bit faster. And then lastly, as far as colors, uh, today we're going to be using uh, five different colors. Uh, so we'll be using uh, white, black, uh, blue, yellow, and brown. So these five colors, and then for uh, the rest that you see on there, we're going to be making them. So I'll go ahead and give you uh, some time to collect these items while I get situated here. All right. So cool. And this is the artwork we'll be making. We're going to be taking it from the background, moving forward. So that means our sky is going to come first, followed by the mountains, the greenery that you see here, uh, the plains, and then lastly, our friend Bison uh, towards the end. Uh, but before we get started, I'd like for you uh, to take a look at the artwork and see what, what things you can add to your painting. So you can make it a little bit your own, right? So you can add uh, different elements or, or take them away, right? So elements would include just any pieces that you see in the artwork. So if you wanted to add, let's say another bison, or maybe you wanted to put the bison on this side, or uh, now that I think of it, you can even add a little bison down here, right? Because this is supposed to be farther away. Maybe you wanna add uh, a moon or some clouds or use different colors. Uh, so wherever, wherever you see an opportunity, I encourage you to take it. That way you can make your own artistic free, uh, uh, decisions while we're creating our artwork together. Uh, but awesome. So I'm going to be placing uh, my canvas and I'll be showing you the artwork as we move along. But for now, I'm going to put it off to the side. Um, all right. Okay, cool. Let's get started. So I'm going to be using my flat brush to begin with. So it's this one. And we are going to be making the dark skies that we see in the background. I remember vividly the last time I went 
uh, to Yellowstone, it was it was pretty cold, uh, uh, overcast, uh, but it was just so cool to see um, the bison just roaming around, and and they're definitely not cold, right? Because they have a lot of uh, a lot of fur. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna start off by pouring out uh, some white about the size of a quarter, and we're gonna pour a little bit of black off to the side. So I actually poured out a little bit too much black by accident. Uh, so we don't want to mix them all together at the same time just yet. Uh, with the with your flat brush, you just want to grab a little corner of black paint, so not even that much, and use that to mix it with your white. So we first want to create a lighter shade of gray, and this is going to be uh, most of the uh, shade that we use for our background. And then we're going to add some darker streaks of gray after. But for now, we want to create our main, main color. So this is what it looks like. So once you have uh, that gray, um, you can go ahead and make yourself a little, a little, um, a little line here that's going to give, uh, that's going to make the division from where we put our mountains and our sky and everything below is going to be uh, the plains, right? So after you do that, you can go ahead and start uh, painting your background using these uh, di uh, diagonal brush strokes. So we want the sky to look a little bit uh, fierce, right? Because there's probably a, a storm coming. So this is a great way to, um, uh, to make, that, make that happen. So you just want to make some uh, brush strokes uh, in the diagonal direction. So make sure you go up and down as well. Right, you want to reach the top and also down here. Uh, and it's okay if you cross the bottom section, right? Since we're gonna be painting over it, so no, no biggie there. Uh, so one thing to note about the sky is that we definitely want it to be darker than the color we're going to use for our mountains. So just uh, keep that in mind. If your sky is a little too light, um, then you just, you're just going to want to make sure that your um, mountains are a lot darker or the other way around. All right, so then this is our first part. And before we let the, um, the background dry, we definitely want to go back and add those darker streaks of gray. So what you can do now is uh, add a little bit more black to, your, um, to the first gray you were using. So now uh, this is what my second gray looks like. Definitely a lot darker, right? And then with this one, you want to add some streaks first, and then we're going to go ahead and blend those in. You, you want to keep the same direction of your brush stroke, right? We've been doing a uh, horizontal uh, brush strokes, so that's uh, those are the same ones we want to keep. All right, so now the uh, the sky is looking a little bit more um, more intense, right? There's definitely some rain that's about to come down. Make sure you're uh, you're also grabbing these uh, the top sections of your canvas. Uh, we don't want to miss those.
right, this is looking uh, very nice so far. Uh, most of the, uh, the shades are on there now, so you, all you want to do next is make sure that you don't leave any uh, blank areas uh, that are not covered in paint. Uh, so just feel free to make a scan from one side to the other. Um, and if you need to move some paint around, go for it. But after uh, we start adding our mountain, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to, um, to fix any areas of your sky. So you definitely want to be able to do that now before we move on. All right, that looks pretty good now. Uh, so for this next step, we wanna make sure that the uh, background is dry. So let me show you the, uh, where we're headed, right? So we just did our sky. We're gonna go ahead and start adding our mountains. Notice the color, right? It's a lot lighter. Um, so again, if your background looks a little too light, you wanna make sure that your mountains are a lot darker. But if your background is already this dark, then uh, it'll be easier for us to paint our uh, light mountains. So for now, if you are done with your sky, uh, feel free to start drying it. So you can use uh, the extra piece of, uh, sorry, the extra paper plate you have, or maybe um, a recycled piece of cardboard. Awesome, and then in, in the meantime, we can talk a little bit more about Yellowstone uh, bison. So as of uh, last summer, um, they counted a little over uh, 4,500 bison uh, that roam around free. There's two herds. There's a big one that's around 3,000, uh, a little over 3,000 bison, and then a smaller herd, about 1,000, a little over 1,000 bison. That's a lot, right? Uh, and you can definitely see them uh, year-round, so if you ever uh, do plan a trip to Yellowstone, uh, you will be able to see them regardless of uh, the time of the year. So that's pretty cool. Um, and bison are super, super huge, so you got to be careful, right? Definitely don't uh, get too close to them. Uh, there is going to be um, maybe a, temp a temptation to want to pet them if you're in your car, because <laughs> they can get very close to you, but definitely don't do that. Uh, I believe a male can weigh up to 2,000 pounds, so that's a big, big animal, right? And females weigh a little, uh, a little over 1,000 pounds. All right, I think that's pretty dry so far. Uh, and I want to check out the, the comments really quick. Uh, Rosie, uh, Rosie says she uh, she once uh, was able to see a herd of bison in Yellowstone. I bet that was pretty awesome, right? Uh, Victoria, I'm super happy that you're loving your sky so far. Um, and yes, Rosie, seeing the bison is scary and magical at the same time, I think, too. Uh, because they're huge, right? Um, I was very impressed by the size of their head as well. It's, it's big. Um, and, I, and I'm always worried that they're going to snap their, uh, their knees because their, their legs are pretty thin compared to their bodies. But, um, but no, they're, they're okay. <laughs> Um, all right, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So for the next step, we are going to be creating our mountain. So let's take a look at, at these two peaks here. So this is a great opportunity for you to do something else if you want. Uh, you could do one mountain, you could do several, right? It doesn't have to be the same. Uh, but one thing to note is that we are going to be using a very, very light gray. 
So that means we want to be careful with how much black we add to our white. Uh, for the most part, we're going to use more white, of course, um, and add just a little bit of black. So to begin with, I'm going to pour out uh, some white, maybe a little over the size of a quarter. Let's check it out. And I'm still going to be using uh, the same flat brush. Uh, so, but this time I'm going to grab just a, a little bit of black. So that's not that much, right? And I'm going to go ahead and mix it. And again, we want to make sure that this gray that we create, it's a lot lighter than our sky. All right. And it kind of looks like a... Uh, I don't know, like a little pastel gray, very light, right? Um, all right, so once you create that gray, you can go ahead and start outlining your mountains. Remember that you left a, a mark here. Uh, I crossed it, but I can definitely still see it. So that way it's gonna help me a little bit to figure out uh, where the mountain should start. Awesome, so then this is, uh, these are my two peaks. All right, so once you add your, your mountains, you can go ahead and start painting the inside. All right, so, um, and when I paint mountains, I like to uh, paint from the peak and going downwards. That way we can see that um, those brush strokes going down And again, uh, for this section, if you cross the line, it's okay too. So no, no worries. Once we get to the, uh, the planes, we'll be going over that with a different color. So it won't be a big deal right now. And uh, uh, right in between the mountains, instead of having them be super sharp, I'm going to actually make them a little bit rounded. So they're very uh, connected. They're not super, super apart. All right, so once you've added uh, the main color, we do want to give our mountain uh, a couple different uh, shades, right? So using this darker gray that we use on the background, I'm going to go ahead and give it uh, some darker areas. So definitely um, closer to the right side of each of each mountain. You just want to make sure you blend it in nicely and that, um, and that it's not taking up the entire mountain, right? Just uh, some areas.
So here uh, for the direction of the brush stroke, I'm still painting from the peak and just moving down depending on the direction of the mountain or the side of the mountain. And that way we can still see those brush strokes uh, following along um, the size of the mountain, right? I think that makes it look nice. Awesome, so we've added a, a little bit of shade onto our mountain. And then the last thing we wanna do is add some, uh, some darker shades closer to the peak. Um, and for this part, you can use a, a brush that's a little bit smaller. The goal is just to add um, some darker, darker gray, even closer to black, uh, closer to the, uh, the, the edges of your mountain, so the outline. And this could resemble um, uh, just like big stones that are up there, right? Because um, the mountains don't have the same color throughout. I want to do the same with the other one. All right, uh, so once you've added uh, the different shades to your mountain, you can go ahead and start drawing it. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot to add some, uh, some darker streaks closer to the bottom section. So with this, um, all you have to do is um, add some, some darker tones at the bottom, and then we'll make sure to blend it in using uh, the previous color. And this is so we can see some darkness closer to the bottom. Um, yeah, and we can uh, have our mountains be a little bit more dynamic, right, with our colors. So once you added uh, the darker shades here, you do want to go over it again with a little bit of, of the lighter shade that you had, so you can blend it in. All right, folks. So now uh, after the mountains are done, uh, you can go ahead and start drawing this, this section. Uh, we're mostly gonna be painting over the bottoms, uh, the bottom of the mountain. So uh, no worries if the top sections are not dry.
So the next colors we're going to be using are uh, green. So we're going to be making uh, some green, darker shades as well. Uh, so we won't be using our gray for for now. Um, yeah. So a little bit more about the bison that you find in Yellowstone. Um, so they, for the most part, can live anywhere between 12 to 15 years. Uh, but there's some that make it all the way up to 20 years. Um, and uh, if you ever want to see a, a baby bison or calves, I think, I think that's the right term, uh, you would uh, definitely want to go late spring. So that's when they give birth. And you'll be able to maybe spot some smaller ones. All right. Oh, sorry. All right, folks, I think we are almost ready to move on to the next step. So let me show you where we're headed. So next, uh, we are going to be uh, creating the uh, the greenery that you see here towards the background. So over here, you'll see like a very uh, a bigger areas, right, of, uh, of foliage, and then on this side, some smaller ones. And then down here, some little pine trees. Uh, so again, you're welcome to, to do and add whatever you'd like. Um, and I encourage you to try out some different things. Uh, but for starters, we're gonna go ahead and create uh, the green that we're gonna be using. So for this green, you wanna make, um, just a, a regular green using the same amount of blue as you would for yellow, right? And then that's going to give us the, the green that we're looking for. So I poured out some blue about the size of a quarter, and I'm going to do the same for the yellow. Go ahead and, and mix those. And then we're gonna add some uh, darker shades once we lay out our foundation, right? So our, our main, main green. All right, so once you mix it, you should have a nice uh, green to use. And for this step, um, you can start off by just dabbing your brush and making the shape that you want. Remember that you don't want to, um, well, at this point, it, uh, we, we don't want to cross over here. I mean, it, it's okay if it happens, no biggie, but since we're going to be painting over it, um, you can just go ahead and, and uh, try not to go there. Yeah. So for this step, you just want to dab your, your brush and make the shape of, um, of your uh, greenery area. And uh, to be honest, uh, this section can either be a lot of trees put together or, um, or uh, uh, just big bushes, right? It really is up to your own imagination. You can play around with, uh, with the height of these sections as well. Some of them you can make them a little bit taller while others a little bit shorter. Um, or if you like uh, symmetry, you can make um, each side the same, right? It doesn't have to be a, a different. Awesome, so once you've laid out uh, your first coat, what we want to do next is we want to add some darker areas of green. And we do that by uh, converting this green into a forest green, right? Or a darker shade of green. And you can do that by adding a little bit of black to your, uh, to your green. So I have some black right here. I'm just going to grab a bit, right, for starters. And uh, go ahead and blend that together. And I should start seeing a, a darker green. All 
All right, so now I have a darker green here. And with this green, you wanna uh, add uh, darker shades closer to the bottom section, right? Cause it's definitely gonna be a lot darker there. Uh, but also just play around with the inside. We just wanna be able to see uh, different, different shades of green on our, um, on these sections. So definitely put some at the bottom. Um, and then you can also just play around with the rest of the sections. And for this step, you also just want to dab it. Just go ahead and dab uh, the paint onto the, um, onto the sections. Awesome. Um, and then for the, for the midsection, the, uh, this is where we're going to add just a, a line of pine trees. Uh, so for this step, we want to use a, uh, a thin brush. So if you have, um, a flat brush or very, um, a small flat brush or very, uh, a small, uh, round brush, that's what we want to use. So I'm going to be using this uh, very thin flat brush that I have here. And uh, I'm going to use the very, the very bottom part of the tip, right? So not uh, angled or the corner, but the very flat bottom section. Then that way I can have um, smaller, smaller lines, right? Or thinner lines. Right now, um, I'm positioning the different trees first, and then I'm going to go ahead and fix them by giving them uh, um, some proportion, right? These are um, uh, just trees that are a lot thicker from the bottom section and become a lot thinner as they go up. Awesome. Now you have some, some little trees there. You can add a little bit more of uh, this green on this side. All right, cool. So uh, after this step, we definitely want to make sure uh, this section is dry, right? So before we start adding uh, the the ground. So next, we want to make sure uh, we're drying this section. So feel free to start fanning it once you are ready. Cool. Um, so fun fact about bison. So many fun facts, right? Uh, Yellowstone is uh, one of the only areas that has uh, free roaming uh, bison. 
I think out of uh, 48 states, uh, Yellowstone is one of them. Um, and uh, unfortunately, in the 1800s, they almost went extinct, which is pretty, pretty, pretty unfortunate, right? Uh, but for now, uh, they are good and free roaming. Uh, but there's also another cool place that you can find bison, and that's uh, also in California, but somewhere pretty remote. Um, any guesses? <laughs> it is in Catalina Island, which is an island that's off the coast of Long Beach. Um, I, uh, uh, in, sorry, um, I once went there to uh, do a, uh, what was it, like a, like a five-day trek through the, it's called the Trans-Catalina Trail, which is a beautiful, beautiful uh, hiking trail uh, that goes into the mountains, the, the plains, also along the beach. Um, and I encountered two bison. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely find uh, a little over 150 bison there. Uh, and there's a couple of theories as far as how the bison got there. But the most fun theory definitely would be that um, closer to the 1920s, there is a, a movie being filmed there. And it was a Western movie. And um, the, uh, the production team transported a number of bison there, right? So that it can be on theme. Uh, but it became very, very difficult for them to take them out after. So what happened, uh, the owner of the island uh, decided to, to accept them. So now they just uh, re, uh, sorry, they just, uh, they're, they're there uh, free roaming on their own. So they're not uh, considered herds. These are individual bison. Uh, so they're on their own, just hanging out. Um, and you definitely still don't want to get close to them, right? But if you ever go to Catalina Island, you'll definitely be able to see a couple of them. If you go through the hikes, um, and they're they're as big as as the ones in Yellowstone, I think. Uh, and also, you can get a uh, uh, milkshakes made out of a uh, bison milk in Catalina Island. They're pretty pretty good. So right now I'm just getting rid of the uh, the excess paint that I see down here, just so that I can speed up the uh, the drying process, or else it might take a little bit longer. All right, folks, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. So for the next step, we're going to be painting the, uh, the ground. So this is uh, a ground that's covered in a wheat grass, right? We can see the, le the little yellow uh, flickers here. So we're going to start off by painting the entire thing yellow, and then we'll add some uh, streaks of brown, and then we'll nicely blend it in. Some areas will stay a little bit darker, while other areas a lot brighter, right? So what we want to do first is um, we're going to be using our flat brush and we're going to be pouring out some yellow All right so I poured out a little over the size of a quarter we're going to use quite a bit um, and you want to start painting uh, just from one side to the other using uh, horizontal brush strokes Um, and if the grass section up here hasn't dried out yet, um, I encourage you to leave a little sliver of space uh, and then we'll get back to that. That way um, the green doesn't mix in with your, um, with uh, your, the ground that we're making now. Uh, 
All right. So once that, once you've covered the entire thing uh, with yellow, we can go ahead and start adding uh, some streaks of brown. And for this step, it's to uh, darken some of the area. So you don't have to do it for all of them. Um, but we definitely want to add some uh, dimension in there. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and mask some of these areas down here. And on this side. All right, so I added uh, my brown, and then I want to start blending it in, right? So very slowly, if your brush has an excess of brown, you can just get rid of it. That way, um, it doesn't make it darker. And you just want to lightly uh, move it, move it around, right? Awesome. And once the top section has dried out a little bit, you can go back and add um, some more yellow. She left a little hole there that needs a little bit of green. There you go. And uh, if some of your areas are a little too dark and you want to make them a little bit brighter, you can uh, cover them with a little bit more yellow. We're actually going to add um, uh, a pastel yellow so that we can make some of the areas a lot brighter. Awesome. So once you've laid out the base of your uh, of your ground, we can go ahead and start uh, playing around with uh, these uh, highlights of pastel yellow. And this is to help us uh, brighten some of the areas, right? So uh, I poured out some white onto my palette. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it. And we want to create um, a very, uh, very soft uh, yellow. Looks a little bit like this. And then with this one, uh, you want to do the same thing that we did with the brown, uh, which is to, to add just some streaks here and there. And then we're going to blend those in and it's going to become a little bit brighter.
Awesome. Now we, we see a lot of uh, uh, dynamic sections on the ground, right? Cool. Great. So now uh, for the next step, we want to go ahead and add uh, the little river that we see here. So check it out. The river starts from where I have the little pine trees and it goes off to the side. Um, and we want to make sure that this line, is, the river is pretty, pretty thin, right? Since it's supposed to be closer, far back, right? The bison's all the way to the front, but this river is uh, pretty far out. So using, um, you can use uh, just white actually for this step. And if your background hasn't dried out just yet, uh, that's okay. It'll, it'll probably uh, carry some of that color. But because this is uh, super, super light, uh, it might not make a, a huge, huge impact. So you just wanna um, uh, go ahead and start off from here. I uh, will probably have to let it dry a little bit more, right? Uh, but you can go ahead and start creating the uh, the shape of it. Mm. Actually, uh, let's go ahead and use this time to dry it. It's a little too fresh. Uh, in the meantime, as it dries, uh, we can actually start adding the, uh, these little areas of uh, wheat grass uh, that are just popping out up here. So with a, a pastel uh, yellow, you can go ahead and um, make these little streaks that just go upwards. They kind of resemble grass. And we want to make them pretty small. We can play around with the size of them a little bit, but as long as they're more on the smaller side, um, we should be good. And you just want to flick your brush upwards as very lightly touching the canvas.
Awesome. Then let's see if we can go back to this uh, river here. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and move on with the uh, bison. This is our star of today. So let's go ahead and take a look at our friend over here. Uh, so the bison's supposed to be very, very close to you, right? That's how we can see it a little bit better. So we're gonna start off by placing this little ledge that the bison is on. Um, and then uh, I have a nice trick to figure out the uh, proportion of the body of the bison. And I'll make sure to show you uh, but for now, we want to um, create the base of our of our cliff, right? So to do that, we're gonna add we're gonna use some brown. And we wanna uh, first make uh, it's almost like a little boat, right? We definitely, we definitely want to make it bigger too. Yeah, there you go. And then the uh, this section is going to be the brown section. We'll go back and give it a different colors now, but we first want to make sure we uh, we're able to fit in fit in uh, the length of it. Right. And once you add um, the uh, once you once you do the outline, sorry, let me lift this up a little bit. Once you do the outline, we uh, want to start adding the green sections. So if you still have some green, awesome. But if you don't, uh, feel free to make some. Again, just using blue and yellow. So all you want to do is paint the, the inside. Awesome, and we do want to add uh, different shades of green down here too. We're gonna go ahead and make it a little bit darker. Um, so you can add your first coat, make sure it's a little bit dry before adding the second one. That way the colors don't um, don't blend in as much and they uh, and they stick right to the canvas. So now with a darker green, you can add just a little bit of black to some, uh, to a little bit of your green, so we can make it darker. And then we can darken some of these areas.
awesome. All right, folks, so we're almost done here. Uh, we're just waiting on the last, last step. So for now, we've done the grass. We do want to go back to uh, this brown piece that you see just down here. We want to make it uh, a little bit darker. All right, so before we move on to the next, next step, let's go ahead and uh, dry this section. All right, so now for the brown section, so the same that we darkened our green, we can do the same with the brown. So you can just grab a little bit of black and mix it in with your brown, and then that way we have a darker shade. And we can use that for the inside. Awesome. All right, folks, so we are almost done here. Uh, so the next step is going to be to add our bison friend. So for this step, um, you do want to use a, a smaller brush uh, just so that you can uh, make the shapes that we're going to make right now. All right, so let's look at our friend over here. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make three circles and then connect them. The first circle is gonna be up here towards the back legs and the bigger circle in the center and the smaller circle for the head. And once we add those circles, it's a lot easier to create the uh, silhouette of the uh, bison so that we can um, easily uh, make the shape. And I'd like to show you what I'm talking about that way you, you have an idea. See, it's a lot easier, right? Um, once you start making the shapes and then we just connect them together. Um, cool, so let's go ahead and, and give this a try. Uh, so one thing to note is uh, don't make the shapes too close to the ground because we're gonna be adding the legs, right? And if you make it, if you make it too close, then um, our bison is gonna have no legs. Or maybe it's going to be a, a, a just laying down, right? But let's just try to make it a little bit higher up here. So you want to make one circle. Um, and then this other one is more like a, a an oval, a vertical oval. And then you want to make another circle. All right, so that's uh, our main shape. So go ahead and do that. And once you've um, made those shapes, you can connect them. All right, so now this looks like a little cone. And then here, this is gonna be the main piece of the head. All right, cool. So now you can go ahead and, and uh, paint in the inside. All 
meant for the leg. And a fun trick we're going to do is we're going to be able to to uh, hide where the legs are with a little bit of grass. So don't worry too much about um, making the legs super perfect. Awesome. That's going to be the, uh, the main shape of our bison. We do want to uh, make sure it's a little bit more on the drier side before we start adding the, uh, the different colors to it, right? Uh, because we want to make it a little bit darker. All right, so for the next color, we want to add um, a darker brown. So we just want to add a little bit of black to our brown so we can make it darker. We'll add this darker shade um, on the back and also on the head. And if you let your brush uh, drag down um, outside of the silhouette, it kind of makes it look like if it's its fur. So feel free to do that. Just make sure it's not too much. All right, and we also want to make sure we give it a nice uh, uh, thin tail, so closer to the back.
Awesome. So the uh, the last two steps are going to be the um, the big bison horns, uh, and we definitely want to give it a a nose. I'm just gonna go ahead and fix the uh, the legs I see down here. So then for the, the horns, we want to make, we want to use a light gray and uh, add a little bit of dark shades to it. So you can start off with, um, with a light, light gray. And we want to add another horn up on the back side, right? But this is only going to show a little bit. All right, and then for the nose, you want to use a, a nice black. Um, you can also use a very, very dark brown. As long as it's darker than uh, what you used previously, that should be okay. Awesome, and then to finish it off, you want to add a, a black dot for the eye. Awesome, let's just clean this up here. All right, folks, and there you have it. This is uh, our painting inspired by Yellowstone National Park. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today. And if uh, you, once you finish your artwork, we'd love to see it. Feel free to post it in the comment section, uh, or if you're a coach or family or volunteer, you can also email it to us. Uh, and next week we are going to be having, um, uh, sorry, we're not going to be having a Facebook Live, but we are going to be posting a tutorial on our social media. So make sure you check that out, and we're going to continue our regular schedule uh, the first Thursday in December. So see you then. Have a good one.